What's up, everyone? It's me, Spencer. I'm back here on the Rebelug channel again with a review of the next 20th anniversary LEGO Star Wars set, the most expensive in the line and the highest scored of our Rebelug voting system, the 20th anniversary Slave 1. This had a 7.48 uh, average uh, as of right now from 23 different Rebelug member reviews, which gave it a score uh, from... 1 to 10 and average out to 7.48 which is pretty high as considering how low some of the other ones were like the snow speeder many people were really impressed uh by the model here some people like lego mania were concerned with how like sort of the the dark red section sort of turned out it looked maybe a little fat or weird or something it didn't exactly give off the correct look but a lot of people were really impressed with the overall model and how it was uh, close to the to the UCS model that is currently out, which is another reason that people were were kind of concerned about this set though. Uh, this is a pretty expensive set at 12 cents per piece. You know, you're trying to sort of aim for like a 10 cents per piece area when you're when you're buying a set. Well, of course, Lego knows that all the Star Wars sets are getting to be pretty expensive, and everyone seems to see that now also. But the UCS set is still currently out. Um, which has a much better price per piece ratio and is also just like an, uh, an unbelievably uh, incredible model. So for the extra price, that might be really worth it to go for. But there's still a lot that this set has, has to offer at that slightly uh, worse value-ish area. Um, so anyway, uh, we can go through my thoughts of the review and then I'll go through some of the other Rebel Lug members' thoughts uh, in the final verdict. All right, so this is everything that we get in the set. We get a bunch of minifigures and the ship. There's no other sort of stuff that they wanted to put a bunch of pieces into, you know, like a little uh, side diorama thing to like increase play value, whatever. They just put all their all their pieces and all their effort into making one really good looking model here, one really good looking ship. And let me tell you, it really is a good looking ship. Uh, it shares a lot of the design features and a lot of the design techniques from the UCS model. And some of those parts, I think it actually even does better than the UCS model. Um, of course, it is a much uh, smaller scale, but it was cool to see that they were able to take a lot of the things that they learned from the UCS model and try and bring them down into this uh, smaller playset model. Even though I bet the UCS model is probably like a better, I don't know, value in terms of like just how enormous it is, the real, you know, like, scope of the model compared to this one. This one is a really solid looking set, one of the best looking LEGO sets that I've ever seen in person, which means that they've really gotten good at figuring out the Slave one in particular. I wish that same sort of thing applied to other, you know, UCS sets that are also uh, smaller, you know, lower level sets like this, you know, like the Millennium Falcon, the, the scaling and stuff on the lower end, 120 to $50 uh, Millennium Falcon is certainly not as good as the UCS model, but I don't know if that's exactly really a fair comparison. You know, we can at least see that they're trying. As for things that I think they've done a little bit better here, uh, it's probably going to mostly come down to like this dark gray, dark red, I mean, you know, shielding thing, or I don't know what you would call it, uh, around the back of the slave one. I don't know if dark red's exactly the right color, but I think it definitely works better than uh, reddish brown, which is kind of the only other option that they have in this scenario. <clears throat> They've used a bunch of these, these slope wedge pieces right here, uh, which I think start to give sort of a better look than the UCS model did because this is such a difficult um, look to achieve. You know, they didn't do it perfectly here, they didn't do it perfectly there. It's going to have a lot of corners in it, a lot of jagged edges in it, when it's really just supposed to be like a smooth, uh, very curvy, you know, thing. I really have no idea what to call it. Just like the back shield or whatever. These pieces may have come in a different color, or maybe they are already come out in dark red, but I've never seen them uh, before. This is the first time I'm seeing them anywhere. Um, no super immediate, useful uh, ideas come to mind, but I'm sure that having like this wedge and slope combination here is going to be useful for some people. Maybe this could come out to be like some really cool roofing tile for someone. I'm not really sure. You'll also notice that I have this little dark gray thing here on the back, just helping it stand up. That's because if you try and just sort of precariously balance it, like in this position, there's certain spots on my table where that'll work, but I would never end up leaving it like that because it's just inevitably going to fall. So, I mean, if they were going to put pieces into something else in the mock, I would say, you know, make it uh, 
sort of a display stand or something. I'm thinking about making my own custom display stand. If you guys are interested in a tutorial for that, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, when you have this set and you want to, you know, put it on yourself or something when you aren't playing with it, as this is definitely more of a play model than the UCS model, um, you're just kind of supposed to sort of put it like this, which I guess is technically its landing position. This is where, you know, the entrance ramp is and stuff, but it doesn't look as cool for display purposes as, you know, trying to get it in sort of a, sort of a flying, flying position. You also notice that as I picked it up, these uh, wing pieces, if you look right here, these things, they move with the orientation of the ship just based on gravity. In addition to that, the co there's a there's a seat in the cockpit where you would of course put uh, Boba Fett that does the same thing as that. We close him up and then when we pull it up, he gets put into the correct sort of position and his orientation, it doesn't work quite as well as the side wings. Um, he slowly has to sort of like get knocked into place. Um, but the concept sort of works. When it's facing straight up, he's generally facing straight up. And when he's straight down, he's usually, you know, right side up. So I can pop him out of there now. Um, there's actually a proper way that you're supposed to fly this ship that I haven't been doing this entire review. Maybe I should have been. Uh, but there's a handle on the back of the ship integrated into like the greebles of the back. Normally it's pretty lame when the back, you know, looks is just a bunch of anti studs and it just looks um, sort of like they didn't have the budget to do anything for the back, which, you know, is like almost always the case. But it sort of works in this case because the back of the slave one is pretty ugly and sort of looks like this. It just, you know, probably has some smoother sections and a lot more greebling. But there's a handle right here made out of Technic connectors that folds out. It's also like heavily built into the frame that lets you fly the ship, you know, like so. Uh, this is a really um, great and convenient design feature where, you know, just some cool design uh, came together with a play feature and made for, oops, it looks like Boba Fett's cockpit has kind of been totally flipped around in there. I'm not gonna bother fixing that, it's part of the set. Um, for swooshability, this gets a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Also seamlessly integrated into the back, you'll find these red tabs here, which are some new pieces that I've never seen before. Uh, you guys can let me know down in the comments if they're new or, or if you've seen them in other sets before. But those activate the, the spring-loaded shooters right there on all the way on the front of the ship. Um, when I was building it, I was like, how are they going to activate these shooters? Is it going to be... Yeah, I, I, I don't see the I don't see the mechanism yet. Is it just gonna be like a really lame activation method? Well, it's actually these very well integrated ones here on the back. Although they did make them red so that you would know that like that's the thing you're supposed to play with. Um, they don't actually stand out too horribly, in my opinion. So I guess for review purposes, I'll demonstrate stud shooters. I'm sure you guys have seen stud shooters before, or not stud shooters, spring loaded shooters. Very cool, thank you. Since these laser bolts are green, they sort of, you know, blend into the to the texturing of the sand green and the dark green here on the front of the ship. I suppose it works for me, uh, but you know, Lego always has to put this sort of playability into the ship, and I think I'm fine with it in this case, even though they've had definitely much better cases of the blaster bolts being totally hidden. There definitely isn't any sort of thing uh, resembling this look here on the actual Slave 1. But I think if they just made this, you know, like a couple arch pieces and just continued this texture up, this certainly would have looked really strange in the context of the entire ship. Uh, I think that this was probably a wise choice to put this little bit of texture here and might as well, you know, try and make a play feature out of it. The construction involving anything that's dark green and sand green on the ship is really, really the strongest part of the construction on the ship. Even though, you know, the dark red parts aren't that bad, they just aren't as um, capably built with Lego as these, this, basically this front section here. There are a lot of, you know, really subtle angles going on with the paneling and the overall just hull of the ship is at an, uh, an angle relative to the dark section that's just super subtle but does a lot 
to, to you know the complexity of the ship, the complexity of the design, and just um, giving off the perfect vibe of this ship. As you can see, there are very few gaps with throughout this ship. Um, you know, you might have seen one right here or something like that, but it doesn't exist because they've done such a great job uh, designing this model to fit well with Lego pieces. We've also got a lot of great texturing going on here. One of my favorite parts is like this grill and then this, you know, um, quarter of a circle tile here and then another grill going down. I think that's a nice looking one. Uh, another piece right here that I'm really excited to, to maybe use in some mocks because I don't have any of these yet is this uh, one by two with the, with the rounded corners thing right there. That's a really nice looking greeble. These same thing, just some simple but really good looking greebles using some new pieces greebles that I really like the look of. Lots of sand green pieces to go around, a handful of dark red pieces to go around, but lots of useful dark red or lots of useful sand green pieces now in the market and dark red pieces. Uh, but hopefully some Bricklinkers do some good part outs of this set and we end up with a lot of these, you know, on the Bricklink market and stuff like that. I believe this section right here, this big dark green arch with uh, this this filler arch in here is probably my favorite part of the entire ship. I'm going to show you a picture from the construction of this ship to show you how these little filler pieces are done here that give off this really just super clean filling of this gap here. This is a really, really great example of just some creative construction and creative attachments uh, of Lego pieces. Great work from the designers on that one. They got this dark red section to be as clean as they possibly could using a lot of similar techniques and pieces as the UCS Slave 1 uh, to try and achieve just the look that the original Slave 1 had. But this is definitely where the design probably falls apart the most just because it's not practical to build out of Lego. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that they that they shouldn't do it or something. I'm glad that they're that they're attempting as much as they can and it definitely gets the point across as good as it possibly could. But of course, just, you know, not like 100% necessarily with all the jagged edges and stuff like that. They try to integrate some of like the scratched off paint and stuff like that with these light gray pieces down here at the bottom and just a handful of other light gray pieces around, you know, the whole area of the ship. Uh, you'll notice some new one by three jumper pieces right there, uh, kind of just buried beneath the dark green arch that I was talking about. That's them. That's one of them right there. And there's, you know, another one over here. And on the other side, of course, the arch just sort of rests on them. I think probably because they couldn't put, you know, like regular studs there because they have the logo on them and uh, make an illegal building technique or something like that. These wing sections, these, uh, you know, things that go up and down, probably the most annoying part of the build to make just because you know, they're just not very interesting or satisfying to build. I don't know. I just didn't enjoy making these things. They were the last part that you do, actually. And as far as I'm concerned, they get the job done. They have the right colors and stuff like that, including that little uh, tan mark there using the three teeth piece. I think that's pretty creative. Don't really mind them. It's pretty neat how they were able to get them perfectly balanced uh, in terms of, you know, like just the piece distribution on them so that when you put the model up, you know, they they start to move with the model. That's pretty cool, I suppose. Uh, but that's about the only interesting thing about them or only thing I really want to talk about anymore. This little dark orange highlight in there is also accurate to the ship. And I don't know if this is exactly the right angle to look at it from. It doesn't necessarily look this good from this angle, uh, but that's a nice extra splash of, you know, good looking color. Try and give you a better angle of that than I'm uh, more or less looking at kind of from there more of a top view is a better look for that This is a great looking angle of the ship in my opinion here This is a angle familiar to the movies I believe that has been made really good looking because they put so much effort into just the subtle angles and subtle details of the ship So far even though this is supposed to be like, you know, a lower-end model not the UCS model They've really achieved a lot of the intricacies of a model like the UCS model the ramp here uh, does come up a little bit and this leaves room for the Han Solo in carbonite uh, mold here which depicts you know a Lego figure being molded in carbonite I think that's pretty cool this is the same one that we've been getting for a long time um, and I'll show you how the Han Solo minifigure clicks into there later 
I actually totally forgot to go over it uh, later in the review. So here it is. Here's Han Solo inside of the carbonite uh, piece. He just, his hands just kind of click on there, and he fits in there super well. But he just sort of, you know, gets pushed into the bottom of the ship. There's some little curved slopes in there to help you, and it just sort of, you know, rolls into place. And it's pretty easy to get out of there uh, if you just sort of push it up and pull it out. But you put it in, you can put the ramp down, and... It'll roll around a little bit, I guess, uh, but not really that much. Not, it's not not a concern at all, and it won't ever, you know, fall out. So if you're trying to store it somewhere, uh, that's a good place to put it. If you aren't putting it with all your all your figures and stuff like that. As far as I'm concerned, the cockpit is pretty not solid um, because of this, you know, rotating seat thing, which has like a giant weight at the bottom to keep it from going down. Um, or to keep it from going upside down, uh, but of course that doesn't really work as we saw earlier when the seat, you know, sort of flipped itself upside down. It's sort of difficult to get the Boba Fett minifigure in there. Of course, this is absolutely nowhere close to the right scale uh, because as we see in the Clone Wars, you can get a bunch of people in the cockpit and there's also like a bunch of room back here where they like keep prisoners and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I understand the limitations. I'm not saying they need that, but I'm just not very thrilled about putting minifigures in the cockpit or anything. It's not like putting one in an X-Wing where it's you know, almost kind of fun. It's just it's more or less awkward. They did at least try to put some attention to detail inside the cockpit with a couple of stickers here. This is the same sticker on both sides of the of the walling that depicts some of the, you know, like the controls and stuff like that of the ship. I think it's always cool to get more of these, you know, like Star Wars specific Star Wars unique control stickers and stuff like that. There's the same control panel we've got in a bunch of different sets right here on the top that he sort of like looks directly into as you saw when I took him out of there. If we look down into the cockpit we can kind of see some of the inner workings. The way that this big angle is achieved, the big hull angle is achieved by just um, making some te Technic connectors at just you know various angles, very subtle angles. Uh, you could probably work out the Lego math to be able to achieve that properly. I think that would probably be kind of cool to, you know, look into for your own personal mocks and stuff like that, because I'm sure that it's perfectly accurate, uh, considering that Lego did it and Lego always has to, you know, make their things legal and stuff like that. But I'm not going to tear this thing apart just to, just to see the exact, you know, studs or whatever that they put it at to try and do the math to see the angle that they put the thing at. A couple more sections that I just didn't go over, but I figure I should mention. Uh, these little turrets here at the front look really good, especially with these new, uh, you know, curved one by two pieces. Those are really good looking. Uh, I don't know if I'm feeling these square, like, leaf pieces or teeth pieces here in sand green, uh, but, you know, they add the proper detail, and I don't know what piece I would put there besides that. Uh, there's a couple stickers <coughs> on the outside of the body, including these ones right here, that just sort of provide some extra texturing. Uh, we sort of, you know, we get that same, like, lame effect where the stickers don't get to the edge of the piece or whatever. Uh, I wish that wasn't really the case for a lot of things. I think it really detracts from, like, the look of the model and stuff like that. Maybe you could shift the pieces down into the bottom uh, corners of their respective pieces to try and get the look that I'm talking about. I don't understand why they wouldn't make the pieces go to the very edge and make them really difficult to apply, but, you know, maybe Lego, you could just print all the pieces. I don't know. Same thing if we come here to the front of the ship, there's a similar look to try and achieve this area that doesn't have uh, any dark red or dark red markings on it. You get these dark red outlines that aren't actually there and we just kind of look past them because, you know, there's stickers there that don't go to the very edges. But in conclusion, as just a model, regardless of the price, this is a really great model. Uh, really all around perfectly achieved the look and if you have a lot of nostalgia or if you're really into star wars you have a lot of nostalgia for episode 5 and stuff this is a great model to get uh, if you just want a super solid model all right so here are our five minifigures four of which are really part of the set and then one of course is just this promotional leia figure uh, in my opinion i think these promotional figures are kind of like bringing up the price of the set and sort of pulling down the value a little bit because the figures aren't necessarily part of the set. Um, but it is still cool to get the promotional minifigures. Um, so yeah, now we can get into some close-ups of the different minifigures. This Han Solo is only slightly new from the one that came in the most recent original trilogy, the Millennium Falcon. Uh, the only difference, I believe, being 
uh, the head print in that we get this double-sided head uh, with the one on a smile on the back um, and one with the more traditional Harrison Ford sort of scowl face in the front. Uh, this is the one with the, the new-ish uh, hair print or hair mold, uh, which I am personally a fan of. I don't really know if there's some controversy around that, but of course there's always controversy around that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm definitely digging it. The way it parts at the front and stuff like that, it looks super cool. It almost looks, you know, like aftermarket or something like that. He's got some great uh, looking leg printing here on these dark brown legs and dark blue uh, jacket. That's a great combination, a great combination of colors. I always love the, you know, the darker Lego colors. They always look the best, including this entire ship that's made of dark red and dark green and stuff like that. Just some really sharp looking printing. Not much to say, however. Uh, there is some printing on the back, which is just, of course, a nice addition. I think this is probably one that they could have left plain, but this definitely adds a lot with the, you know, just the simple lines in the back. Basically making it, you know, like a worthwhile figure. Uh, we get this generic Lego blaster that, of course, they can't make too... They can't make too screen accurate for some reason. Um, but... Whatever. I suppose it does the job. They go through all this effort to make other stuff really accurate, and then they're, they're too afraid to make you know, accurate looking Star Wars blasters or something. This is four Lom, uh, sort of, you know, like maybe a, a, a bounty hunter that looks like a fly almost. You know, a little strange, but it's a cool looking figure. Uh, this is the same one that came in the bounty hunter battle pack, so it's not particularly valuable or anything. But you know, if you don't have that one, this is a this is a cool cool looking figure. I don't have that one. I think it's a cool looking figure. Uh, but if I had owned the battle pack, I might not be that excited about it. I'm digging the printing. Just some really, you know, again, sharp looking printing. Legos figured out the whole printing thing. And the body is like uh, a gun metal almost. It's slightly metallic. I don't know if you can totally tell, but it's definitely not dark gray. And then there's some like light bright orange, light bright yellow. I don't know the color exactly printing on the torso. It's a, it's a interesting look. Same with the legs here, as you can see. And then he comes with this generic Lego rifle. This is probably the most valuable figure in the set. This is the one everyone's here for if they're trying to get the figures, if they collect figures or something like that. This is Zuckus, a figure that's never been made in Lego before, and a very interesting figure at that. This is the this is of course the first model of this figure, unlike the Boba Fett that's coming up that's been in, you know, like a twenty five dollar set or something. This is one that's this is totally exclusive to the set. Since there's no like joints in the legs, they're able to get some really great looking printing here on the front, uh, where like they have this you know sort of uh, long dress ish kind of mold piece that they've started using here instead of just using two by two by two slopes. Um, they're able to get uh, just because this is like the face of a brick almost. They're able to get just really consistent printing across the entire front of the uh, entire front of the figure, and then of course we get this um, totally molded new mold, exclusive mold, uh, head for Zuckus here, which has detailing throughout the back and around to the front, and it looks like probably some silver paint and silver printing there to get that. I highly doubt it's, you know, like dual mold. It doesn't look like it. We get some printing on the back of the torso and then even printing on the back of the, the dress sort of piece. This is an interesting piece that I haven't uh, gotten before this, even though I kind of knew it existed. This may be new in dark brown. I can't check right now because uh, Bricklink Daily Maintenance is happening. They even have printing on this this concave surface here of the legs, uh, which I think is you know just a lot really cool addition. There's like black lines that go down that make it just seem more like you know a fabric dragging dragging behind him. Uh, and then there's also like just some beveled edges on the sides of the the thing here on or actually on every side of the leg so that it probably blends better you know like with the torso and stuff like that. Uh, because torsos aren't exactly, you know, like, just total rectangular prisms. Uh, this is this is cool to see. This is a great, great figure. Another just super lame blaster. This is like the Space Bullies blaster or something like that. Um, but it gets the job done for another Star Wars bounty hunter. Definitely a fan, f Dan, fan favorites, you know. Uh, bounty hunters are the coolest. Now we have Boba Fett, of course, basically the main star of the ship. This is a Boba Fett that's come in a, you know, like that $25, $20 um, carbon freezing chamber set. So there's not a lot new to see here, but it's still a very cool Boba Fett. If they wanted to make this a really cool Boba Fett, they could have done, you know, the arm printing like they have on the, the, the like ultra rare Boba Fett 
from the original Cloud City set, of which they made the Lando for the promotional figure in that other uh, um, set. I don't remember exactly which one that was. But this is still a really impressive figure for LEGO. As all their figures are now, they're getting super, super impressive. Sand green helmet, sand green jetpack, and stuff like that. If we take off the helmet, there's just, uh, you know, a really lame clone face, but I guess it's appropriate here, seeing as Boba Fett is a clone. I'll let it pass. We have this printed pauldron thing here on the side. This is really nice looking with the dark orange printing and dark tan uh, makeup. If you're into, like, you know, making just... Uh, minifigure bar for whatever this is definitely a cool thing to get there's a lot of cool minifigure bar from this set honestly we get just another generic blaster this one they at least tried to mod a little bit with you know the black lightsaber hilt on the front which is really cool to see I like these black lightsaber hilts um, and then I like I, I suppose I like it when they try and just mod the guns to to make them a little bit less generic but you know still pretty lame um, the legs are super detailed and they tried to make the design actually come to an end here uh, where they where they always stop the printing you look at all the legs they stop the printing right there for some reason don't really know why they have to do that because you know aftermarket Lego companies don't necessarily have to do that but they tried to make the design you know co cohesively come to an end there um, which is really cool to see there's some little printing on the boots which is good to good to see he has like those the steel tipped uh, boots or something like that and bring up the legs, there's a little bit more detailing there to see. Lots of lines, lots of sharp looking lines. Very impressive figure to uh, for Lego to have made. I'm still coming from a time when like, you know, the, the belt printing was kind of rare to see or really cool to see. Now it seems like they're on every figure and it looks pretty good in this case. Of course there's little sand blue lines in between them where they couldn't totally get the printing done. But um, it's definitely a really good looking figure. I suppose it more comes down to like the Lucasfilm uh, concept artist that made such a great color combination for this figure in this set in general uh, but it definitely comes out really well really well in Lego I suppose I should actually show you the printing on the back of the torso here that's covered up by the jetpack something that they didn't need to do but there's a lot of colors here to see um, a big dark green background and then there's some dark brown for, for the belt there and just lots of other little lines this is some great looking printing lots of different colors on the back for something that'll never even be seen all right so luckily for me since this is the this is the classic princess leia minifigure from a super long time ago there's not a lot of super high detail to go over here there's just the only thing that makes this figure new is the 20 years lego star wars print on the the back of the torso which is definitely really cool to see um, you know, for this sort of promotional line, we also get this plate, uh, the same plate that you get in all the sets for for all five sets. So if you collect all of them, you can have this full line of the classic minifigures, you know, with their different name plates in front of them and stuff like that. Uh, so what you see is pretty much what you get here. Um, I will say I think it's cool that Lego's trying to do this sort of classic line here to to sort of show how far lego as a company has come in the last 20 years the beginning of the instructions will always show you the original set versus the set that you have just purchased the set that the instructions are for and the difference is incredible so over 20 years lego has as a product has improved dramatically there's so many different new pieces the building techniques are uh, much more difficult than they used to be and just uh, there's a lot of innovation going on in the last 20 years and um, I think they're probably trying to do some sort of thing to like you know thank Star Wars for that not Star Wars as a brand but just Star Wars was one of the big things that uh, you know pulled Lego out before they almost uh, went under almost 20 years ago however these promotional figures definitely really uh, impact the value of the set I don't think it necessarily impacts it as much here because this is one of the biggest set in the line but for the smaller sets like the imperial dropship you're pretty much buying a battle pack which is you know like a 15 dollar product you're getting exactly what a battle pack is and then you get a han solo but the set price is 20 dollars so you're paying five dollars if it never goes on sale i don't know if it will uh you're paying six seven ten dollars for the han solo that you don't really want and it kind of eliminates it as sort of like that battle pack thing or and this sort of applies to all the other sets because uh, those figures aren't necessarily useful for like the play value of that set I mean maybe some of them are uh, but I don't know it's sort of up to you if this nostalgia impacts you it doesn't necessarily impact me because I wasn't buying Lego sets 20 years ago but you know especially for that battle pack it really impacts the value of it uh, but 
yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely torn on my opinion over having the promotional figure line. Um, my opinion is always going to be, though, to, to put your money into pieces and stuff like that. If you're a mock builder, I always encourage people to be mock builders. But if you're just a casual person, this is a great looking model. But if you're really trying to improve your building skill, no matter how advanced the LEGO uh, set model, the official LEGO model is going to be, it's never going to be as advanced as some of the the mock instructions that you can even get out there for free from people like Nick Trota that release, you know, just um, LDD files for their incredible models uh, so that you can just get the pieces together and build that model and learn so much more if you're really trying to improve your building skill and stuff like that because those models are on a completely different level than the profitable model that LEGO has to try and make uh, with their sets such as this Slave 1. All right, here's my final verdict on this set. I think that if you aren't totally concerned about getting the absolute best value for your money, I suppose, um, this is a really solid model to go for. And when I say value, I mean uh, the price per piece ratio. Maybe if you want to work into the value, the intricacies of the model and stuff like that, this could be a really solid uh, model to go for because this is such an impressive, uh, such an impressive design. Um, if you're really, again, aiming to improve your building skills by building, you know, really advanced Lego, uh, Lego models, I would suggest probably trying to find advanced Lego models online and building, uh, you know, these custom, custom mocks yourself. But for a consumer level Lego set, uh, this is definitely a really great option. The value is definitely hit pretty hard though, which is what definitely brought this set down from probably pretty close to like a 10 uh, to a 7.48 in terms of our Rebel Lug uh, Rotten Tomatoes sort of voting system here. Caleb Elvin Ranger uh, on Instagram and YouTube saying, figs are good, but we already have the UCS version. That is great. Overall, the shaping is good, but really not worth $120. Uh, Elijah Peachbricks kind of sort of echoing that saying heavily overpriced especially when the UCS one which was massively better came out just a couple of years ago uh, which again is still out now uh, which proportionally had a considerably better price per piece ratio than this so of course you do get the one uh, I mean technically two uh, exclusive minifigures and three if you include Han's face um, but I don't know how much that really impacts the value for you. Personally, uh, I'm not super into buying sets, but if I was, this would be the one to get, especially if I was really into Star Wars, because there's a lot of stuff here that I that I really like, really like seeing, and it's definitely super improved over the one from like 1999.